Alright, uh, here we go again, boys and girls. Another beautiful day in the neighborhood on our way to work in Hollywood. I've actually been fairly productive and somewhat constructive in the last few days off. I actually started watching the videos for my online introduction to public speaking course. And who knew <laughs> such a thing even existed that people have previously invested the time, research, and, you know, formulation <laughs> of very specific rules and strategies for public speaking throughout the course of human existence. I mean, who'd have thunk that? I don't know. No one ever, I guess I didn't get that memo. But... It's amazing <laughs> what a little bit of knowledge you might be able to do as far as helping me with my ability to, you know, intelligently and eloquently articulate my ideas to the non-existent viewing audience. But if and when such time ever comes that I do end up on stage having to convey my ideas and this myriad, myriad, by the way, the actual number, is it 10,000? Yeah, I think 10,000 is what the word myriad acts as a specific amount. Never knew that either. And the Greeks, the highest number in ancient Greek culture was 100 million. Compare that to some of the monetary valuation constructs that the World of Union Lake currently has for even worth as measured by the value in dollars, not necessarily connected to that person's actual value to society or the future of humanity as a whole, but nonetheless, that's the value system that exists, <laughs> distorted and grotesquely disproportioned as it may be. So anywho, I guess the first element of constructing a speech or presentation is invention. First up, you're supposed to decide what you're going to talk about first. <laughs> Who knew? I apparently um, didn't get that far on this morning's ride. I do actually plan to use the, you know, the assignments and practice in the class to do some little practice speeches of stand-up comedy or God knows, but I've got so much stuff I want to talk about, but as far as today's ride goes, yeah, we have nothing on the table. Let's see what else interesting happened. Uh, the President gave the State of the Union address last night. Amazingly enough, I missed it. I mean, I kind of knew it was just the evening, but it wasn't exactly on my priority of uh, things to run more late to seek out and watch because... Apparently, I've completely given up on the existing American political construct of being anywhere near trustworthy enough to actually listen to. So it's like they're just, you know, it's like watching a freaking infomercial while at the same time you see the reality of how messed up things are. So whatever is being said and done is not remotely enough. What was perhaps a bit more telling from that whole event last night was the one representative from New York, um, last name's Grim, first name might be Michael, I don't know. But you know, the reporter caught him and said, oh hey, you know, and asked him, I guess, about the president's speech or whatever, but then also this one specific representative question apparently had some questionable feelings in his campaign financing, which, by the way, I've said it a million times before and I'll say it again, a capitalist democracy is an oxymoron, and then you couple that with a completely dumbed down to the point of being worthless and clueless population, and it's just a, it's just a joke. It's like a bad, freak-so-circus joke that's causing harm to millions of lives and ultimately the planet and future as a whole, so it's kind of beyond messed up in a way that's even hard to convey, and yet at the same time, you've got, you know, hundreds of million people that are just 
so damn stupid and clueless. It's just like an exercise in futility trying to <laughs> even bring them up to speed about what's going on or do something about it. So it's the ultimate ironic Thank you, sir. Catch-22 and paradox, you know, <laughs> that I exist on, on so many levels in this life, within this realm. And I guess the overarching construct responsible for much of it is the government in itself. You can come over BMW. There we go. Vroom, 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 vroom. So, yeah. So, but then when you see that, you know, representative True Colors, you see how he behaves with the power he has over a, you know, complete subordinate for simply asking him about something he didn't want to be asked about. And you're like, oh, wow, that's, that's the kind of people you have in these positions of power that control this insane dysfunctional surface that is destroying everything I mentioned. Like, I could go on and on and on. But yeah, but it's, to say it's somewhat disconcerting is an understatement, to be sure. And, but, you know, what are you going to do? Well, if you're me, you design a master plan and then eventually you have to implement that master plan. But the problem is, is when you're, it's that same Catch-22, it's like, how in God's name do you even explain to such dumb and clear as animals just how dumb and cute they are or how screwed up things are compared to how they could be because they just don't have the vision to see what's possible or the knowledge to even understand the true scale of just what's going on and so it literally is the ultimate sexually true paradox it's like my betting life where it's like you're trying to find one worthy of love and marriage in what is essentially a behavioral cesspool so at some point, it's just, uh, it seems impossible, but, you know, I wanted my life to be challenging, and so I guess I have taken on the ultimate challenge in many different facets across the spectrum, but, and let's see, what else is new? Still been doing good, you know, keeping it up at the gym, building my body pack slowly, Oh. I guess I only really have, it's only when something really has to be like it. It's all stuff enough to go, like, you know, it's like, it's more black than your power on TV. Oh, I guess the Grammy were on Sunday and in oh so clever fashion entertainment had a mani cam. Yeah, a mani cam canvas set up with a little fake red carpet walkway for all the stars to write their nails down. <laughs> Which I'm like, oh that's just perfect. It's like let's see who has the balls and let's see who knows what and who has the balls to fucking be on the wrong side of history when you know we've laid down specific instructions for specific reasons and symbolism is a big part of this whole game so let's see what the you know music industry cast <laughs> as to say we're given a chance to weigh in directly you know it's like we're just gonna tongue-in-cheek put it right there front and center and see what's up so who knows what the the entire um, data set of the research holds, but it's there, the machine has it, it exists, so it's one more thing that at some point can be, you know, brought up in my <laughs> retrospectively retroactive um, grading of the people on stage that are largely in charge of for the good, bad, or other that the population itself reflects as, you know, the symptomatic sheep. It's like, oh, when they put this on stage, let's imitate that because we're, we can't think for ourselves. We can't be independent. We've got to follow that. I mean, granted, humans are social creatures. I understand. It's like the, the herd mindset, but you know, it's like, guys, 
when when you see things going the wrong way, it's like, do you not understand? Do you not have the love you puppy? So love you puppy, but eh, whatever. Like they just don't have that strength of character, intelligence, and much deeper um, principle-based foundation that I have. It's like, okay, what is this? Why does it exist? In which way is it trying to influence me? Why? What are all the factors and forces behind that? And is this really in my best interest, or is this these other people doing things in their best interest and trying to get me to just, you know, follow along because I'm supposed to be stupid like everybody else? And unfortunately, in the system as it exists, most of them <laughs> Well, I mean, the nature of the beast itself inherently causes people to be more selfish in their mindset if they want to survive, much less succeed, which is a messed up design in the first place. Like, I mean, that's, I would argue that's actually against human nature, that naturally humans want to help other people to the best of their ability. Granted, you have to have people of caliber with you. You, can't, you don't want to help evil. You know, if people are behaving badly and wrongly, those are the ones you want to say, ooh, not you, you know. But that's why you have to have, you know, transparency and an open society so that you can, you know, see and sort out and call out the get good from the bad from the other. And it's going to happen eventually. I mean, that's the nature of technology. It's like we're we're moving into a new foundation for humanity via technology and the ability to be omnipresently connected and linked to the cloud, but it's just a matter of time, you know, it's like I've got all the ideas there, they've been there, this is like, I feel like the project's been done for years, you know, I have finished, we got van 18 today, I don't know why, <laughs> like we know KTLA, even if we don't, you know, it's like, yeah. at this point, yeah, I guess I've made enough of a... <laughs> Anywhere I go, anything I focus on, if I focus on a, a social group of one type or another, then <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those characters people tend to remember because I just, you know, well, for good reason, you know, it's like I'm not your average cat on the street, there's a lot more going on, and it doesn't take long to <laughs> realize that if you're exposed to me long enough. Tig's ride. Who's Tig? Tiger, Tig, Tig, Tiger. Tiger's ride. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, there's, there's the wish for reading into things and there's the eh, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, 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 the Grammys. Okay, whatever. Um, but no, I do actually have. Um, considerable hope for and excitement about this public speech, but because just what I've learned, you know, sitting there watching videos, the first night, maybe like an hour's worth of videos, it's like you learn so much, you're like, oh my god, like, I wish I did, you know, if somebody would have told me that, like, how much farther along would I be right now? Considerably, that's how much farther, considerably farther along. So, now that I've found these resources, that can aid and my ability and execution of these grandiose plans and projects of mine. That's a good thing. And what I really like about the website, it's through the University of Washington and I guess uh, the MOOC Massive Online Community, I guess, for the first one. Or basically, that's the acronym for the courses online. But EDX is, or edX, I guess, depending on how you want to find it is the one that's the core half of the But in their API online, it allows the, the viewer to watch the videos at slowed down or accelerated speed up to two times faster than real time, which for me is perfect because we know I have a fast moving brain and that's what causes the AD. It's like when you're listening to somebody at slow speed, it's like, all it takes is one gap between words where my, you know, it's like, my brain's like boring, 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 and it's like, so it gives it that chance to wander off, and that's all it takes to go on a tangent, and next thing you know, you've kind of zoned out, 
for <laughs> a considerable amount of time. But when I watch the videos at one and a half speed, it actually conveys information fast enough that it's more like on the natural process of the speed of my brain. So enough information is coming at it quickly enough that it manages to keep me somewhat focused, which is not only beneficial in preventing me from, well, you know, I don't want to want allowing, well, I don't allow my mind to wander off, it just does it naturally. But it also allows me to, you know, take the class uh, literally and accelerate the pace, which is very useful. Since, you know, it's like when I'm doing something, it's like I want to do it, get it done, blah, blah. When I'm laying down and relaxing stuff, I'm slow. I just, you know, allow myself lots of time to contemplate, whatever. But then, wisdom, I like that. There we go. I'm working on it. Where do I go? Drive. We just saw a tape drive, now we got <laughs> So yeah, so we will be taking the online class and so and hopefully you know I mean, just because the information has already been conveyed, like I said, is extremely useful for my purposes and so that's a very, very good thing. It's like who knew? Say hello and we're good to KTLA. <laughs> I just love doing that for a while. The story off is like, you know, we had a crush on just there when we were so you know, you're sitting in front like, oh, this one's cute, adorable, I love the person they're having, blah, blah. But then there's that immediate, like, oh no, she's, you know, right the lion's den in Hollywood, and she's basically dead center on the carousel where you've got a parade of like all these celebrities, you know, and they're being, being famous. And it's not necessarily makes them a good person. But it does quite often give you the, the power of money and popularity and you know you the good looking stuff on top of it. Like it could have been a movie star, but like it's just such a hollow existence. No, we can't do that. We have to create something real with what I've been blessed with. But the problem with her is like, okay, so the age is like, oh yeah, that's that messes up the whole like long-term game plan I had. And then if she's been subjected to that environment for so long, then you know at the same time I've been in sabbatical mode, <laughs> keeping myself nice and alone and preserved for love. You know, it's like that's the point. It's like I don't want to be a hypocrite. I want to find a girl with a, a provenance that I can actually truly respect and therefore love. And unfortunately that is not the status quo in this culture, which makes you know, hunting for love, a very daunting task. But at the same time, I've got time on my side. You know, it's like I'm, like we, if there's anything I learned from the example of my father and many other examples in our study, is a male <laughs> with age, I, he'll be just fine. You know, I could be this age and still be dating 21 year olds if I so desired, and it's fine. So, but then you have that chance of like finding a decent one that's not destroyed and at the same time it gives you plenty of room on the timeline to still like wait until everything else is fixed to have kids and all the other stuff. Like with her it's like, oh that one's adorable, like in a different time and place like that. Just her personality, it's her personality, it's her character, you know, she's kind of sweet and she, it's like if it weren't for her age and her career path. And you know, all the, I mean, and the thing is you don't know, it's like you're just dealing with a completely blank slate, that's the problem. It's like there's no information, you have no idea about the caliber of the actual person you're dealing with. I mean, you're sure she's a nice person, it's just that, you know, in certain operating environments, just like Angie, it's like, okay, so here's a would-be dream girl specimen from the club scene, which means completely destroyed as far as a human soul goes, and you can't, you'd have to be insane to, you know, decide to, attach yourself to that for the rest of your life and have kids with it because there's all sorts of skeletons in the closet that are going to cause major emotional stress you know it's like that's the whole point of being alone and solitary it's like it protects that value it's like okay you know i'm not just someone that goes out and it's like one chick and next and next it actually like if i'm going to waste my time paying attention to you it means you are a very rare 
bird indeed because it takes a lot to even get my interest. Like most men, it's like, oh, you sticky pretty girl in front of him. It's like, okay, oh, wow, goo goo goo. But to me, it's like, you see pretty girl, it's like, okay, that's it's okay, she's got a nice package, but what's inside? Because what's inside is what matters. Like, like pretty girls are a dime a dozen, like whores, strippers, you know, <laughs> certain actresses. And it, it, it means nothing. It's completely worthless. And it's actually quite tragic because it's, it's actually yellow. Good for me, yeah. So, so yeah, so the packaging, you know, <laughs> isn't anything really. It's like it's a minimum requirement. Yeah, it's like you have to have that minimal aesthetic qualification before any of the continued analysis kicks in. But it's that myriad, there goes that word again of continued analysis that really makes a difference between whether a creature is worthy of my love and attention and can actually keep up with me, you know, my <laughs> my hyper-analytical heart, mind, and soul. It's like it's just going 24-7, so you really have to be something special to keep up with me. and. That's why it's so frustrating living in this world. It's like it's such a freaking system. It's like, you know, when you exist and it's like maybe one out of every 5,000 people you see is actually a girl that's minimally attractive enough to qualify. And then to find one that's intelligent and moral and funny and everything else on top of that, it's like, Christ, you're, you know, I mean, granted, I guess I'm in the wrong freaking city, but they're, they're still out there somewhere. It's just a matter of hunting them down. And plus, I've been in hiding for the last freaking 10 years, you know, and intentionally lowered myself to make sure I don't get used for money and whatever. But at the same time, you're going to be hard pressed to actually find, you know, women of caliber, given that scenario, because there's a lot of filtering going on in this ultimate test, but it's because it's the ultimate prize. Me. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm a fucking badass. And if people don't know that, it's just because they don't know me well enough. But I know it because I am me, so it's a matter of me doing everything in my power to try and filter out the bad ones. And, you know, most men, they'll go sleep with easy chicks. But to me, it's like, that's just gross. That's just devaluing myself. Like, I, I don't, I, it grosses me out. Like, if some chick is that easy and slutty and she's been with that many men, it's just repulsive to me. It's like, ooh, because way my mind sees it, it's like if you are, you know, a quote-unquote alpha of highest possible value, three-star chaos, I like that, then you know that, and you know your value, and you don't trade in that value to anything less, because if you want someone to, you know, buy you and keep you for the long term, anything you do is going to ultimately affect them, and if that person that you're saving yourself for means more than all the rest of them combined and forever, like, then that is what should have highest priority, not any of this other bullshit that gets in the way in the meantime. So you just have to find a way around it by any means necessary, which I have done. It's not exactly easy. So it looks like I could have just called in today and maybe they would have let me take the day off, but I've taken enough days off already, so whatever. All right, so that's enough for now. Merry Christmas. Or not.